Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. In this episode, we're going to look at how soil health and crop nutrition can team up to deliver cost-efficient crop yields and return on investment. We're going to do a little bit of math and take a close look at some research in alfalfa, a crop that's well known for fixing nitrogen and improving soil health. And uh, to talk research and strategy, I am joined by Aaron Stefanis. He is the Eastern Canada Technical Sales Manager for the Mosaic Company. Hey, Aaron. Thanks for stopping by. Great to have you on the Soil School. Hey, thanks for having me, Bern. It's always a pleasure. And, uh, I mean, I, I know where I am here in Ontario. We just got some snow. Um, so, hopefully, maybe it'll stay this time. I know none of us like snow, but, you know, hopefully it stays because I'd rather just stay cold and uh, and get the soil ready for next year. You got it. You got it. Hey, and, but before... Before we get there, we got to talk some research. Um, you know, yeah. we hear a lot about um, the impact of having forages like alfalfa in the rotation and the impact it can have on soil health. What do you? What do we gain uh, when we have alfalfa in the rotation? Oh, that's a great question, Bern. And I tell you, it's probably one of the things that we are missing the most. Like if you go back, um, you know, to when our grandparents farmed. Uh, alfalfa was always a part of the rotation because we had uh, diverse cropping, si- you know, diverse cropping systems, and we had multi-farming. Everyone had livestock uh, essentially. Um, but really, when you look at it, we're we're missing in in essentially row crop production. We are missing having that alfalfa, and there's a couple things that it brings to the table that we've kind of forgot about for those that aren't you know using alfalfa every year, and that's uh, that's biomass. So we get really great biomass specifically in the roots. So, you know, when you hear uh, these cover crop people talk about where does biomass accumulate, um, a lot of it accumulates in the roots and we get that nice, beautiful tap root with alfalfa. Um, So we get biomass that way, which also helps soil health, um, which also helps with compaction and issues like that. But a big part of that is with that soil health is increasing essentially our organic matter or even just our carbon sequestering into the soil, which helps with water holding capacity. And we get better nutrient cycling um, by by just having a more robust uh, soil. Because we're, if you think about it, even if you're not no-till, if you have alfalfa in your rotation, now you're resting that soil for at least three years, sometimes even four years. So just having that soil rest, not being tilled, you're still producing a crop. So it's not 100% rest, but sorry, rest from tillage. Um, we're going to increase our biodiversity, microhorize a whole bunch of that, that soil biome that we're looking at and, and doing so much more research on in soil health. Um, it, it's a major factor when it comes to that and a really good addition to the rotation. But some of these livestock people know that already. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, you know, alfalfa is one of the most responsive crops to management. Um, but um, do we manage it effectively? And uh, what I mean by that is, you know, we tend to feed it with manure, but are we missing an, an opportunity? Yeah, good question again. So when you think about that, in general, you know, even when I was, uh, when I was in retail uh, about, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago, you know, doing cropping plans and a lot working with a lot of uh, livestock uh, farmers because where I live in Waterloo region, there are a lot of uh, livestock operations, and we, a lot of the time we would kind of bank on on manure and that manure application because when you do look at it, yeah, you're getting definitely manure, especially if you're applying after every cut. But really, as as we look more into this, essentially, what are we feeding our animals for one thing, and the other thing is how much can we put essentially back into the bunker, in other words, our yield, how much yield are we getting, and how much are we pulling out of that soil, uh, we're, we're really never putting enough nutrition as our yields go up into that crop of alfalfa that we need. And it, and like you said, it is a very responsive crop. It very much responds to fertility, uh, specifically potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and boron. These are all crops, I mean, nutrients that it very much responds to. And also, you know, on a different topic, uh, fungicides. We do see a lot of essentially increase with fungicide work. BSF's done a lot of that. But once again, that's a, that's a different topic for a different time. But just really driving in that alfalfa does respond to management. Now, Aaron, I want to look at some research you did this year. Um, it really shows how alfalfa can perform with base fertility, but also how you can, you know, really drive performance with uh, a pretty simple nutrient strategy. Um, tell us about the research. What were you trying to do? Uh, to achieve here what you're trying to learn yeah okay so really what we're looking at is is that nutrient spectrum 
So we want to look at that balanced crop nutrition. We're not just looking at essentially how much potassium can we put on the soil to make that crop respond, I mean, to that feed that crop so it'll respond. We want to look at balanced crop nutrition, just like our diet. We don't just, if we have too much of one thing, um, it's never good. It's all everything in moderation. Well, so when you think of balanced crop nutrition, what are we going to provide? So we're going to provide potassium. We're going to provide boron. We're going to provide magnesium. And we're going to provide sulfur. And we're going to see when we come, combine these things in a step-by-step -step basis where our returns come on that. Uh, so what we did was we had an untreated check to see, obviously, to compare to with no fertility at all. We used Murata Potash, which is a 0060. We used then an Aspire, which is a 0058 pot potassium and half a percent of boron. With that half a percent of boron, it split 50-50 with a fast-release boron and a slow-release boron. And then we added... Uh, Aspire plus KMAG, which is a potassium, sulfur, and magnesium source. So really, we're breaking that in to say, okay, now we're adding boron. Now we're adding boron plus sulfur plus magnesium to that potassium. So we're really seeing that stepping stone to see if we can keep increasing yields uh, by providing a right balance of nutrition to that alfalfa crop. Let's take a look at the yields and walk us through that step. It looks like you've got that type of response. Yeah, it did. Uh, we were pretty happy with the results. Now, take this in mind, one year. Uh, we will be continuing this for two years and maybe even three, but for sure two. Uh, so one year's worth of data. Uh, repl this was replicated trials at uh, at uh, independent research location. And so if you look at our untreated check, um, we have essentially – we did, sorry, in these graphs is we, we averaged everything. So we took the all the cuts – all three cuts, and we average them to give uh, the top number on the top of this bar graph. So if you look at our untreated check, we had a 6.87 tons, dry matter tons per acre yield. So now we're going to compare everything to that untreated check. And as you can see, when we apply potash, so I should have mentioned also, we applied these at the beginning of the season before our first cut. So right at the beginning of the season, and then after second cut is when our second application was. So we had two application timings. Um, so you can see we got a nice increase up to 7.71 uh, dry matter tons per acre uh, for applying potassium. Like I said, that we know that alfalfa responds to potassium. We're just showing it on paper. And uh, yeah, a nice little increase there. Now when you add that little bit of boron... Now we go up to a 7.97 uh, increase. So we're incrementally increasing at the more nutrition that we feed it. And a big part of with boron, the fun thing about boron is, is that it actually, two things, is one, it helps potassium move into the plant. So we, we, have, a re, we have research with that showing that, that boron helps move potassium more efficiently into the plant, but also it helps with root mass. So obviously, like I said earlier, root mass is important. Um, for biomass in the soil, but also for alfalfa survivability over the winter, we want that root mass to be bold and full of nutrition so we don't get any crown essentially heaving. So that's essentially anchoring it into the soil. Um, so adding that boron, we see that increase. And I bet you if we dug some roots, we would see better root mass as well. And then finally, when, uh, when we have the potassium, boron, sulfur, and magnesium together, we really see that dramatic increase of just over half a ton dry matter per acre increase. And once again, we're feeding it with sulfur. We know that sulfur is kind of th something that we're not, especially as, as we have let, as we've cleaned up our environment, which is good. We have less acid rain, less sulfur from the environment. We need to fertilize our crops with sulfur more readily. And as you can see, we're getting a, definitely an increase uh, with sulfur, but also magnesium by properly feeding um, our hay crop, we are going to get yield results out of that. What about return on investment? Obviously, you know, we can put a lot more nutrition into a crop, but is it going to pay, uh, Aaron? You've got some research here. You, I just say, I'm, I'm assuming you, you crunch the numbers. You bet. Of course, got to crunch numbers because you can do all you want, but if it doesn't pay, it's not worthwhile. Um, so, yes, all three treatments did have a good payment. Um, we did use an average talking to people out in the hay industry, and I know it changes from region to region, but we use the Elmira hay auction, as an, and we use the average pricing of about $0.10 cents per pound is what we used for the foundation of the alfalfa prices. And then the fertilizer prices, we, we did our best guess for what it's going to be in the spring. We used higher prices um, to try to you know bring this home to show if there's a good return on investment. And the great story is, is yes, every treatment had a good ROI. Um, so if we look at Myriad Potash, uh, we had a $17.81 return on investment by applying potash. 
And and this is the cool part. Once again, we start getting that balanced crop nutrition, especially that boron. Like how I said, that boron making potassium more efficient, better roots. Now we're essentially doubling our return on investment and getting a forty forty three dollar and thirty one cent per acre return by just adding a little bit of boron. Mm-hmm. And then finally, uh, when we go to the you know Cadillac of adding boron, magnesium, and sulfur. Uh, now we're essentially get, we're getting another five dollar, but still it's that incremental increase to just pushing our yields, pushing money back into our pockets, and and getting a better soil health because we have more robust and healthy plant um, to essentially at the end of the day drive home better uh, better yields and, and better crops for uh, for growers in Ontario and essentially all of Eastern Canada. Well, Aaron, hey, always great to have you on the Soil School. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I'm sure we'll talk to you through the winter. Oh, you bet. I always love uh, being here, Vern, and uh, looking forward to talking to you again.